are going. What's going on with everybody? It is your boy, Eric, aka Young God, coming to you live in the green dungeon, giving it to you real raw rugged. And I got some on the other line. Uh, I'm trying to control my cough. This nigga vaping, so this nigga might be coughing more than me. But uh, I'm gonna let him introduce. <laughs> I'm gonna let him introduce himself, man. Who we got? I am a pop star, Benny. You know, I'm producer, DJ, graphic designer, amongst other things. I mean, how you doing? Yes, sir. I'm kicking it. Just enjoying life. So I want to get right into it on how I even know who you are. So mm-hmm. I've known. I've known your beats before i knew who you were so how do i explain this recently i've been seeing the name pop star benny a lot a lot and for whatever reason i'm like yeah yeah i get a nigga a chance like whatever you know so i'm thinking you're a rapper i'm thinking i'm thinking you're like a, a nigga who raps so mm-hmm. i'm like you know what i think somebody like brought you up like you should interview pop star benny. i'm like I'm, fin- I'm like if this nigga trash like if this nigga can't rap man i'm like bro like, stop <laughs> stop requesting me stuff so i'm not I'm not, I'm not knowing what I'm about to go into. So mm. I go into him, like, oh, he makes beats. So then I, I hear the tag, and I'm like, wait, I know this tag from somewhere. So going back to how I know you before knowing your face, you produced one of my favorite songs from an artist. Ooh, that's what I'm... <laughs> take, a wild, I ever hear. take a wild guess. I'm plugging up my computer while you do that. Um... Wow, I don't know because I, that's the thing. I've produced kind of across the the scene as a whole, yeah. I mean, even into the mainstream a little bit with the mm-hmm. Rod Wave shit. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, I don't know. Man, I showed this song to people when I'm like, bro, this song right here, it's <laughs> well written. Just starting off with the artist, it's such a well written song. It's such a well performed song from the artist. Mm. The beat is very different. From what I would usually hear from this artist, it's that after months of feeling dead, finally yeah. feel I leave again. I had yeah. gave you all my love, again. bro. <laughs> what? So nah, th- that's so hard. Thank you. <laughs> first time, of course. First time I heard that album, that was the song that stuck out to me because I like that album, but I'm like this song is very different because this beat, and I'm like. It's not a. It's not. I don't know what that sound is, but it's like you were had like a little scratch effect. It was like, you know, what I'm talking about that. What, what yeah. is that? What is, I love that little that little part. Right. My um, honestly, probably just some little uh, yeah, just a little effect, little percussion type sound that we have. Oh my gosh, that 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 little part. Somebody asked me recently, like, do you have like a favorite like small part of a song that you love? That's one of those parts where it's like uh, it's so minimal, yeah. but it really makes the song that. even better. So that beat is crazy <laughs> because I I I feel like somebody like Raw Wave. I like Rod Wave, but I do sometimes criticize Rod Wave because I think, well, it's not, well, I guess you could say it's his fault, whatever, but I say, man, I feel like Rod Wave can get into a bag sometimes where he could sing over songs or sing over beats that are a little too samey sometimes, and yeah. I, I start looking at Genius, and I'm like, he produced, because this song don't sound, I'm like, oh, so this nigga be giving Rod Wave all the different beats, so yeah. I just want to thank you for, because I think that Rod Wave He's on his way to be uh, to, to to do it already, but I think he could be like a really important artist of this generation because yeah. not only can Bruce sing, I think he has a really talented pen. I think he can pen songs really well because even No Love, like I love the hook to that. Like I gave you all my love, you gave me your <laughs> Bruh, That's literally that's so like crazy. the first like the first time because I only linked up with him like one time years ago, yeah. and like that was like one of the first beats I played from. Um, Man, that's like, that's so fire. Ever. That's so fire. And it's funny because I'm a Florida nigga, so... Uh, that makes all the sense. Uh, that, oh, so that's a real Rod Wave appreciation right there. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm from Jacksonville, so mm-hmm. a lot of people, way before Rod Wave blew up, I had niggas telling me, like, bro, this, he gonna be the new one. He gonna be the next one. And I'm not gonna... I've realized I'm very pessimistic. So when somebody tells me, I'm like, this nigga probably gonna be ass, man. I'm very <laughs> pessimistic, but I end up loving him. So with all that being said, I just want to thank you for giving me one of my favorite Rod Wave songs. And just in my opinion, one of his best songs. That's such a no, good song. No, that's, that's an honor. And that's like hella throwed because like literally like two, three minutes before the interview, I was just like tweeting like, I was fucking with all the Rod Wave appreciation, like just as a whole with the internet catching up to him and like really just beyond, you know, just knowing him, like really being like, damn, he doing numbers, he touring crazy, the songs are actually good, real emotion, just all that shit. I was like, it's 
like, I'm glad he realized it because, like, you know, he's just been so real. So, like, the fact that, like, that's what we kicking off the interview with, like, literally an extension of where my mind was already sitting is, like, really crazy. It's beautiful, <laughs> man. And and like I said, even the, um, what's the one that you did on his most recent album? I forget the name. Oh, of the Don't album. Need. Don't Need. Like, that beat is very, it's like, damn, this is very different from what I would hear. So and it's just... different. But that's the thing. I'm glad you're from Florida, though, because it's like, that's why I feel like. I've even gotten these raw wave placements because it's like, you know, I've had family in Florida. And I just appreciate Florida culture. So I feel like kind of tapping into, like, what's that, uh, the grind mode so high yeah. and, like, yeah. uh, beam off yeah. and it's all those things. It's like, they got, like, the pop sensibilities, but, you know, it's still, like, Florida's can be type shit. So I feel like for the sadder beats, I'll be pulling from, like, beam off because it's like, that's still got a bounce to it, but it's like, oh, man, oh, man, oh. like, it's, it's sad, it's sad, little sad type shit. So, and then, yeah, it's like, don't need, it's he, like, that's definitely that grind mode, like, just, you know, ecstasy, early uh, 2000s, Florida vibe type shit. Exactly. So, I wasn't expecting to go down this rabbit hole, but can we go down a quick Florida rabbit hole real quick? Because yeah. I think you would appreciate this. So, Beam Ah is made by DJ Chipman. Mm. DJ Chipman really needs to be in the Hip Hop Hall of Fame, if you ask me. Do you know what else DJ Chipman has made? Yeah, they do Pierre Brown Jelly. He freaking made peanut butter jelly, <laughs> jelly time, bro. Time. That's crazy, bro. You fit. Where did he at? Where did he at? Bro, what? that was on Family Guy. That was on a Family Guy episode. That's so. You ever True. seen that? You ever seen that before? Actually, actually, I do remember that. That was like one of the first like early internet memes. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it was. So you got that. He freaking made. Um, this was in a commercial old topic. You ever heard um. Ice cream and cream and cake. Ice cream oh, and cream I and cake. Oh, I didn't know that was him, the ice cream cake. That's yeah. him. Oh, then he got a pocket. Another Florida classic that, uh, which I found recently, people know this song outside of Florida. Have you ever heard the song Wu-Tang? Yes. That's the DJ Wu-Tang Chip, man. Yeah, it's that Wu-Tang, Wu. No, nah, yeah, he's, yeah, nah, he literally, yeah, that's like a whole pocket of, bruh, that's like, I feel like I got over, yeah, that's like a whole portal that got spiderweb, like, overlap into so many other zones, even down, like, the hyper-pop and yeah. like, pitched up shit, the sped-up, cult- I mean, Florida been doing it, bro, when I saw that they were doing the sped-up versions of the Broadway songs I did, I was like, I'm Florida approved, it's literally, like, <laughs> it's like, as embedded as can be type shit. No, that's funny, because I was, I was enlightening somebody on that when they were talking about, like, sped-up stuff, and I'm like, I compared it to Texas, because you know how in Texas they chop and screw stuff. I said, yeah. on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, since I was a kid, people have been, uh, they call it, like, fast music. Like, they mm-hmm. will speed up whatever. Like, bro, I know niggas who don't even listen to the original album. Like, if Kodak drop an album, they're not even listening to the original album. They waiting for DJ Fetty Fee. They waiting for yeah. one of them to, like, freaking speed up the album. So, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So, to yeah, see it now, I like, know, on TikTok, that, it's, yeah. it's, it's like a thing now, you know? Interesting. Florida deserves a, all the stripes for sure. Oh, for sure. Shout out to Florida. And also, shout out to you because we're not even really into the interview yet, but, like, we <laughs> have a couple. We've, we have, we've, like, not crossed paths, but we have, like, mutual paths that I don't even think you know about. Um, one thing that I've seen is that you took a screenshot of a KTT thread about your album. Yeah. I'm a KTT nigga. So that's so crazy to see that. Yeah, nah, bro. I used to, bro, early, bro, early 2000s, like, I was, I'd be on, like, all the vlogs, like, Ill Roots, uh, Two Dope Boys, all that shit, Tumblr, but then I'd be on KTT. That'd be, like, my other source of, like, just all the cool music, what's happening in the world type shit, like, real deep. Like, I never really posted, but I would, like, lurk for sure. So it'd be crazy, like, seeing, like, with the Brock Hampton, like, realization yeah. from, like, just having threads on there type shit. Is everything, yeah. Shout out to KTT, man. That's uh, like you said, literally birth a band. You know what I'm saying? Brock Hampton, yeah, you know, yeah. A, a whole entity straight off it. Crazy. And speaking of bands, that leads me to the next path that you probably don't know about is people that we know. Mm-hmm. So I went to school with boy band. I know, I know boy band, and I see you following oh, each other. Oh shit! Yeah. You know. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. Shout out to boy band. <laughs> Nah, that's crazy. Yeah, the universe be having the overlap. That's crazy. It's crazy. Like... <laughs> guess, guess who I just interviewed at eleven this morning? Ooh. Anisia. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> she told me to tell you that she loves you a lot. So ah, I love her 
number two, man. That's that's the real deal of the gang, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> Shout out to Anicia and one more person who I say for last because he's actually like one of my closest friends of all time, and I've seen you interact with him a lot on Twitter. You follow him on Instagram, Nate Number Eight. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, nah. They be knowing. Yeah, they be knowing about everything. What? First, bro. That's crazy. I see. I seen you. You replied to a lot of his like the songs he does, like the little like uh, he got one leg, or you know how he be doing the yeah, songs. Yeah, <laughs> because that's the thing. Even though it be comical, like he really be getting in the pockets. Like the oh. flows be crazy, the beats be crazy. Yeah, the topic, like that, be the whole other thing. But the actual like structures and like pieces elements of the song be like crazy Bro. and some whole other just random shit yeah. one time bear was in la and he was like hanging out with earl and earl was pulling up like back to back a whole bunch of nate number eight no crazy like, i was like Bro, what the fuck i have like, to tell him that that is so funny that's bro. Yeah, right. niggas don't know nate is a really good rapper me and nate when we were in 10th grade, put out a mixtape. It's funny. I didn't plan this. It's right there. I'm going to pull this up real quick. Literally, <laughs> I printed out flyers to pass around at school. It was called, it was called Big. It was, yeah. about, it was about big girls. So that's me. Yeah, random ass big girl. And then that's him. You know what I'm saying? It was an appreciation of big women. And, bro, we was rapping our ass off like goddamn Nas about big women, bro. So, yeah. and I was that's 16 years old. It's like the topics, you know, be on some meme shit sometimes. But the actual, like, so, like, it's undeniably, like, a nigga really rapping. Yeah, shout out to freaking Nate, man. And it's funny because you are, we're talking about, like, these kind of newer age artists, Bear One Balls, Nate. You're, like, the soundtrack to a lot of these guys like like you're like like they're providing like the the words they like if it, it's like a movie they're writing like the, yeah. they're saying the script you're you're scoring it you're scoring yeah. the movie and i feel like some of these not some of these beats damn near all these beats are just phenomenal bro and it I, i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna keep I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it so real you'll produce for somebody who i'm like okay this nigga sucks but this beat though <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this nigga is not good. But this beat, I'm like, God. I'm like, this nigga don't miss. And Man. I just want to let you know that, bro, these beats, bro. Hey, thank you. But since you listen to Rod, that's the thing that you can hear. It's like everyone I work with, I'm trying to provide that same level. Like, I'm not. That's the thing, like, that happened, like, I don't know, some years back when I felt like I was stagnant in it. I was like, I got to stop putting aside the folder, like, Oh, when I meet Drake, oh, and I, it's like everyone who I work with, if I got a hard beat, I got to, you know, try to make the best song yep. with them type shit. So it was like, yeah, I, I be yeah, I'm glad you peep that. You know, I got, I got a song for you that you produced that it's, it's damn near, I've been going back and forth in my head that I'm like, I like this beat, but I'm like, there's so much going on in this beat. I'm like, I think I like it, but I like, I do like it, but I'm like, damn, boy, it is a chaotic ass beat. Mm. All the girls is such a chaotic Ooh, ass beat, bro. Say that. <laughs> it's so much good. You got thirty samples going on, bro. I'm yeah. like, dog. This is so like. I need to know. And it's funny we're starting off like this, but like, I just need to know like the process of making that beat. And when you were making it, did you feel like this is a chaotic ass beat? Yes. I mean, <laughs> but the process. I mean, the process is honestly like. It's a full circle shit, because it's, like, in 2014, 2013, like, when I was really, really, like, getting my presence in SoundCloud and music and the internet, like, I was making a whole bunch of, like, Jersey Club flips. It was, like, um, that was just kind of the way with, the, like, the indie dance people, like, then they were just, like, going down to Jersey Club wormhole. So I was, like, watching a whole bunch of Boiler Room, and, like, just all the, like, low-keyer, like, Fool's Gold and, like, Lucky Me, just, like, Cashmere Cat, like, all of them. So it was like, like since Jersey Club was damn near coming back, you know, I was like, oh, let me just retap into them skill sets. So it was like, yeah, around that time, like last summer, I was just like back making shit, back sampling. It's like, yeah, I definitely knew it was chaotic, but <laughs> it's like, I feel like that was the fun of Jersey shit. It was like the real authentic, like Jersey Club shit. Like that would be like 45 seconds, like on soundcloud and shit like it'll just really be like the worst mix but it's just all the vibes the worst mix like it's like that might be wrong on a technical level like that's so fast that's so you know loud that's so whatever but it's just like it's the energy of it though yeah it's like because they're not thinking about it in terms of like you know is this gonna overstimulate people they thinking like okay when 
they're in the club or they're in the party and the lights is flashing like it just go make them want to dance you know so it's like it definitely is a lot but it's like in the specific context of like please move <laughs> you know you know it's funny i i would just it ties in perfectly because i realized this recently florida like that florida music that we're talking about and jersey club music damn near has like a similar connection because they're both like up tempo they're both like dancing yep. type music yep. and if you didn't know any better you might think like they were like cousins or something you know what i'm saying yeah, they're very similar bro this is and now bro it's like as we unpacking it you see it like this is how i'd be making my music it'd be like realizing the like links between every region like even like the afro beat and latin shit and every the like the world music right now i'm feeling like bro across all the cultures like we doing similar things it's like you might do it at this tempo you know and i might do it at this speed and i might do it with these drums but it's so much like yeah. overlap so that's like really my wave right now is like figuring out how to just crisscross everything i fuck with For so sure. all the girls that really is like one of the blender type regional efforts of just like all the sounds and waves that i know is like fuck it is this right now you know it's funny i thought i was done making the parallels with people that we know but aside from nisa who i just literally interviewed like a couple hours ago you know who was my last interview? Because we're talking about Florida and we're talking about up north, and this ties yeah. in perfectly. My last interview was Nyante. Bro, ah! <laughs> Bro, I literally just brought him. I had a show up there like early, uh, like yeah, early last month, and I brought him out like, like a special guest performance type shit. Was that with uh? Was that was that where No Bills was that? Yeah, yeah I the seen Nobel that. show. I seen yeah, that, that was I seen yeah, that. that was crazy. I seen that. Funny show, but yeah, I brought him out because that's the on some <laughs> random. Bruh, yeah. <laughs> Big ass spider whatever. It was a random shit like he was on tour with Mike like two years ago and I think like they were listening to Bear Heavy, so they hit me and Bear up to like come perform at the show. And the next day we got in the studio, so it was just like I just like randomly had a song with him and Mike um for the past couple of years and then like, you know, they come on tour every now and again, you know, just keeping in contact. But yeah. I think he either stayed in Atlanta or just got like a lot of mutual Atlanta people. Yeah, he definitely already knew hella people I knew too. Shout out to Nayante, man. That guy, uh, right. he's he's yeah, interesting because he has like a Florida voice, but he rapping over these like weird beats that you wouldn't expect a Florida nigga to rap over. So it's so interesting to hear that. And even somebody like Mike who you bring up, Mike is interesting because he's looked upon as like this lyrical guy or whatever, but he's listening to everything. You know what I'm saying? Everything. Everything, bro. It was like that. Yeah, bro, I salute it. Because I'm just like, because I know on paper, like, people would, be, would probably think me and Bear, like, well, I've seen it. Like, at the two shows I had with him, like, the crowd reaction when, you know, I'm doing my DJ set or when Bear came out, you know, it's definitely like, what the heck. But it's also, <laughs> it's also like, you know, Mike and his homies in the background, like, hey, uh, what the fuck? Because this thing is like, he, you know, fuck with everything. So, so yeah, I fuck with that heavy. Because on paper, people definitely wouldn't expect that. Not at all, because... You you'll see Mike with an Earl, and I but then I see listen, nigga listening to V's. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. he'll be tapped in with like you say a bare one boss. <clears throat> and it's so interesting because you just wouldn't expect that. But those are very cool guys. I, I'm pretty sure as you you met them, like you know like they're very like yeah. down to earth cool guys. So shout out to Mike. Exactly. Man. Shout out to Mike. Shout exactly. out to Mike. Yeah. Too, man. Shout Super out to cool him. Guy. And it's funny because I was looking at one of your interviews and you were talking about um going to film school and I see you got the little uh because the internet film poster behind you uh and you were talking about like doing photography and stuff like that but it made me think you going to film school are you actually into film at all yeah really yeah that was the thing is like right around to the, the thing like growing up i really didn't like watch too too many movies but then just like later in my teens like 15 16 you know i learned how to like uh torrent hella so i was just like trying to catch up on like any good cult classic type movie like all the american psychos and just like wrecking for a dream just like hell of those like you know kids uh truman show like yeah. just hell of those like you know movies to watch type movies i was like trying to catch up on so it's like yeah i was at georgia state for film um but it's just like the music things start picking up so i just like switch focus for sure but before i changed it to criminal justice i minored in film and I felt the same <laughs> way because at that time, I felt like, man, I don't really know enough movies. So I did like a thing where I was like, every day I'm going to watch a classic film that I've never mm -hmm. seen. And some of those that you named, Truman Show, 
uh, just a bunch of stuff. I had never seen Goodfellas, so like I watched Goodfellas. Mm. I watched a bunch of just things that like you know like you're supposed to see or whatever. Yeah, right? exactly. So, very good stuff. Anything you're watching now? Like any any recent movies or shows you you recommend? Bro, I'm not gonna lie. For like the past year, I've been binging Cheaters so hard. That's like my favorite. <laughs> the show? <laughs> yes, that's my favorite show, bro. Can I quickly interrupt you? The yeah. most random interview I've ever done. I've interviewed Joey Greco, the host of Cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> I interviewed Joey Greco, the host uh, of Cheaters, nah, bro. Yeah, we, we gotta talk a little bit about that, but I just love it because it's like I like the crime shows and all the crime dramas, all yeah. that shit. But I'd be feeling like. Sometimes that just might be like a little too heavy, like on my psyche to just be like back to back consuming like all the like worst crimes and murders and scams and schemes and history type shit. So I fuck with cheaters because it's like a first 48 like level type investigation, but it's like the pettiest human level, like, yeah. you know, two, three people drama type shit. Like, oh shit, you know, she's sleeping with her boss. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's crazy. Like, you know. <laughs> It's funny because I was just talking about first footage with somebody and I was saying like how there are certain times where like it's hard for me to look at it because I'm going to tell you the, my least favorite part of first 48 is when they have mm. to break the news to like the mom or whatever and it'd be mm. the black the black mamas they'd be going like you know like oh, we're sorry your son just died ah! and it, I'd be like bro I can't watch this is too sad bro. I can't watch this so you, like you said it's too much a little bit on your psyche you're like all right but it's a little a little too much man so Exactly. I definitely feel you. I definitely feel you. Sometimes you need some something just silly like cheaters. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. So. so that's that's really like been my go to. What a, what a show? Any movies? Um, I saw a Barbie movie recently. Mm. That was pretty cool. I did like the um, you know, I did like how, I guess like. It wasn't it wasn't completely serious, but it did have a clear like this is the message we're trying to get across to you type shit. Like, sure. you know, they didn't like, you know, draw it out. It was still like fun, but it definitely like was very clearly like, all right, this is a statement on uh gender relations in America and the world right now type shit. I thought that was like cool. Um I went on opening day. Uh but I I watched Oppenheimer. Uh, I went to go see uh, Oppenheimer. Uh boy that movie no, is that one, yeah. so long. It <laughs> don't yeah. bro. It's a three-hour movie that I don't know needs to be three hours, but boy, it's long. Yeah, I heard it was really good. It's good though. It's, it's like, good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. my attention span, bro. My attention span is just so terrible. Like yeah. I be getting antsy. Like I always like will look up the running time. Like I'm like, okay, like I feel like they're getting closer to the resolution. You know, anytime it's like a minute forty, like I'm like itching. Like oh, I got to get out of here. Yeah, man. It, it was. It was a. Uh, it was oh, a long man. one. It was a long one. Any yeah. other ones outside of Barbie? Uh Nah, nah, that's really been the main thing. I've really been, like, this year, more so, like, trying to catch up with music. Like, I felt like last year I was kind of, like, locking in, just working on my sound. But this year, like, anytime, you know, some new major release in the underground or, like, you know, mainstream, you know, I'll try to check it out within the first, like, week or two. For sure. I And I, and I have to ask you this because when I first seen you, I, I said to myself, wow, I sound like a white man right now. When I seen <laughs> you, I was like, bro. Why doesn't this nigga have a basketball in his hands, bro? This nigga, <laughs> this nigga need to be blocking somebody's shot right now. It's how, all good. how many times have you heard that? Like, do you play basketball? I know you've heard that so many times. Thirty thousand million <laughs> times, and it's like it's my favorite thing to tell people. No, I actually have never played basketball ever. No type of sports ever. And yeah, I love I love saying that. I assume I was like, bro, I bet this nigga ain't even played a sport before. I knew you were going to say Never. that. Bro. I knew you were to, that's so funny. There's always the inside. I'm gonna be on the computer, and I definitely like played outside on some like you know kid shit. But like around like fifth, sixth grade, like yeah, you know, once I got really once I got on the internet, it was over with. Cause that's when I was just like, oh yeah. And then once like one of my homies taught me about you know getting all the programs and all that yeah. shit like around eighth grade, then it was like oh. I'm diving into anything that's cool. Let me get Photoshop. Let me get FL. Let me get Blender. Let me get Sony Vegas. Let me get, like, just anything that I can fuck with. So when you first got FL Studios, because I remember when I first had a cracked version of FL Studios when I was a kid, and, um, yeah. boy, I sucked. And I was just like, <laughs> I can't do this. Like, were you ever, because, like, we were kids doing this, were you ever deterred? Like, ah, this is too hard. Or did it just, like, push you further? Like, nah, I'm going I'm to crack this code. Yeah, it, it it did deter me actually. I'm not gonna lie. I think like I started in seventh grade, and like I think in eighth grade I was like walking to school or something, and like I played one of my homies. Uh, 
like something I worked on and like the nigga laughed and was like this sounds like some Pokemon music uh... and then like <laughs> from that point I just felt like alright like literally like my whole like high school career like I just secretly made beats like I didn't really never tell no one never like I really was just like I gotta get five before I even think about like showing it type shit it was a uh, uh it's interesting because it's like like you know how certain stuff can like just turn people off like i can't do this but then there's yeah. certain things that is like it's like it becomes like a challenge where it's like i want yeah. to like conquer this challenge and that's interesting because i felt like i'm glad that you stuck to that because boy oh boy you really have given us some amazing beats i mean like something like i appreciate that this song isn't even out technically but something like so what by nisi that's like, the craziest part though it's not even out and they got a presence bro this should be <laughs> yesterday i tweeted a screenshot of just like it in my like you know personal itunes like you know i'd be putting my own release music on there niggas were and pissed off got, like, they were over, pissed like, off they were like <laughs> bro like, yo, you got dropped this. i'm like yo <laughs> Like, y'all don't even know, because that's the crazy part, too, is, like, the song's not even too much longer than the snippet, so I'm like, y'all really heard it. Like, y'all heard it. Like, y'all heard it. And it's, <laughs> but it's still, like, crazy. It's so good, Months man. later, too, it's bro. It's so good. We were talking about it in our interview, and I could tell people keep bringing it up. She was like, she was like, I'm gonna, she's like, y'all go stop asking about this song. She's like, it's gonna come <laughs> out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. That's the thing, though. It's like, it's really, like, it was a gift and a curse that it, like, blew up how it did, though, because it's literally... It's just like I feel like if we had a chance to put it out and you know it gained traction down the line, it might have been a big deal. But like since it came out the gate like a big deal, like you know they got to talking the whole clearance shit immediately. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, immediately, so it's like you know we just, <laughs> we just like ah man, but yeah, everything's just trying to get in order. That's the thing though. It's like I feel like the fact it still got the presence though. It's like it's worth it to do whatever we got to do to make sure it can like come out and be out and stay out type shit so as a producer i don't know if this is a sample snitching i've hey i've sample snitching damn near boy i just seen nigga that by damn near knock a nigga out for doing some samples <laughs> so i'm gonna tread lightly when i ask you this yeah. question but it seems to be more prominent correct me if i'm wrong are there a lot of producers sampling like very low-key stuff on like major on like oh, major wait, labels. Wait, you, oh, you're you're breaking up a little bit. My fault, my fault, started. my fault. So is there, is, is it common for producers to release something with an artist on a major label album, not clear it, and just kind of hope like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, is that a thing? Like, like for example, this is what I'm thinking about. I don't know if it's Sam's issue, but something like Mad Lib and Freddie Gibbs or Mad Lib and whoever. Like, I feel like there's no way. Is it just kind of like we hope this nigga don't find out we sampled this thing? Yeah, it's like, yeah, because for, I feel like for the big, big, like, major label, like, definitely undeniable, you're in a scope to Columbia, like, they usually will do the clearances, I mean, because, like, shit like that is, like, sometimes it'll be in, you know, their label system, it's like, you know, for something like Interscope, if it's, like, part of, like, the big major thing, my example, someone that they own the rights to now, so it's, like, you know, just be, like, more often something that they don't want to do it, but I feel like on the intermediate level, um, well, side note, I feel like that's even why we got hit with the, uh, like, clearance shit, like, immediately, because I feel like the way it blew up, like, you know, they were, like, figuring, like, oh, this got to be, like, a real deal, like, yeah. actual major label, even though we was, like, as indie as could be, like, <laughs> tell you shit, but, like, I feel like the way they came out, they, they just, like, felt like, because things usually within that thing, because they didn't hit us with, like, too crazy of a clearance price, but it was definitely, like, they're expecting it to be like a label or something with like a real you know push behind it um but yeah for like the intermediate like some of these drill artists and shit yeah they be rolling the dice man that's definitely what it be because sometimes like the clearance part will be like a bigger deal than like just if it, if the song gets big enough to warrant it then we might have like the money to deal with the you know yeah. clearance part if, they, if it gets found out and that's usually like people's mindset with it do, do or it's like the song might do what it'll do like in terms of the effect of it like like uh what is it i think finally stretched my hands you know metro was like he wasn't tripping about the sample on that because like the cultural thing of it being a big song it's like you know we gonna all blow up and catch streams other way yeah. that shit. is there uh do, do you know the story about danny brown and his album atrocity exhibition yeah, I saw him say that. It's crazy, man. Like, niggas in exactly. debt because of that album. But that's that's, that's wow. the same type of thing where it's like, you know, he did the process, but that's one of those things where it's like, the process <laughs> might have been more than like, because it's like, you know, who knows how long the samples could have flew or if it would have caught or, you know, that's the thing. Like, if it's enough to warrant it. 
but that's the other part. I think he partnered with a real deal label for that. So like I said, you know, that's common practice for them to just go ahead and if you're using samples, we're gonna do it like all the way type shit. So it's it goes both ways. I feel like it's just laying out, you know, the actual like worthness of it. Like I said, for so what, at first I was like, the song's already done what it did, you know, in terms of like making her a way bigger deal within yeah. that short time span. So I'm like Effect wise, you know, it worked, but the other part is like people still like really want it. So it's like it might, you know, it probably will go even further beyond whatever it's hovering at right now type shit. So it's like, yeah, it's, I feel like it's just situational. Um, but yeah, usually in the big label system, they'll and want to clear it type shit. So is something like this with like so what kind of being like stalled with things like sample clearances? Does that does that stray you away from sampling at all, or you just kind of keep moving? Yeah, I'm keep keep moving honestly, because uh, it's like, I mean, yeah, because that's what it's kind of always been, you know, where it's like don't rely too he- heavy like on sampling because like things like this can come up. But you know, like I said, it's situational because it's like certain songs, you know, we might go above and beyond to do that, and then it, you know, might not be a song people care about. And it's like, eh, what do we even do it for? Versus like it could just rock out for however long, and then you know. That would suck. You pay a bunch of money for a sample, and you're like, boy, this is the one right here. And nigga's like, no, it's not. Boy, that has yeah. to suck. Boy. That has to suck. Yeah, man. but I feel like that's the cool part is, like, you know, song got, like, a pre-release to know, okay, this is something at least worth, like, considering type shit, you know. Gotcha. Hey, what's your, what's your, do you have a favorite beat of yours with no sample at all? Yeah, it's probably, um, damn. Honestly, it might be that Rod Wave. Uh, no love? Don't need. Or don't need? Yeah, don't need. Honestly. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, because I feel like the fact that it's so, like, 90s R&B. I mean, it's, it's really 90s R&B, but then it's also, like, in the context of my current career, it's, like, literally a beat I would have, like, gave to Bear One Boss. So it's, like, the straight, like, pop star being sound. Like, I feel like the other ones, you know, are definitely, like, let me put my twist on his world that he already exists in. But, like, that one was, like, a blindly, like, let me just check. That's, like, he has a couple of random, like, unreleased ones that he's done over my beats. And it'll be, like, those extra, like, plug and be, like, synthy ones. So it's, like, you know, I knew in my mind, like, all right, he'll, like, he at least likes these <coughs> beats for me. Even though, like, if the world hasn't heard them, like, you know, he's considered rapping on them in the past, so it's not, like, too crazy for me to yeah. include them with, like, the Rod Wave type ones, you know. <clears throat> your, um, your your Rolodex of people that you work with is so ridiculous and so versatile because you got somebody like Rod Wave, who is nothing like Bear One Boss, and Bear One Boss is nothing, I don't know how much y'all got together, but he's nothing like Niante. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. those three different artists could not be more different if you tried to make <laughs> them different. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I do want to ask... How did you find out, just as a fan, about, like, Nayante and Mike and Mavi and, and like, that crowd of, 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 of hip-hop? Uh, really just just paying attention. It's, like, I feel like whenever, because that's the thing, is, like, I definitely, like, be on the internet. You know, I'll follow, like, follow back random fans and stuff all the time because, like, I really just be, like, wanting to know, like, what's up, what's cool. So it's, like, I feel like when certain movements and stuff are happening, like, it literally will be just like a recurring little like storm. Like I feel like right when Earl was uh coming out with his new style that he was rapping with, like, you know, people were saying like, Oh, you know, he's been inspired by Navy Blue, he's been inspired yeah. by Mike. So then that made me be like, all right, there's this whole other side world that Earl thinks is cool enough to like start rapping like sound like, you know, get influenced by type shit. So that just yeah, it made me yeah, it really just panted, honestly. I, I say this all the time in interviews, but I, I feel like I have to say it. I cannot stress how cool those guys are. Like, all those people in that circle, Pink Sifu, all of them niggas. Like, I remember I interviewed the nigga Pink Sifu, and I threw out, like, bro, I'm a really big Navy Blue fan. If you could, like, reach out to him for me, that would be nice. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I got you. But I'm thinking just like, yeah, whatever. I ended up interviewing Navy Blue on my own. Like, I just, like, he, like, found, like, his mom sent him my review of his video of his uh, album which was random but uh when i interviewed navy blue he was like yeah pink seafood actually told me about you and i was like really 
I was like, that, like he didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? So Mike, right. Mike always super nice to me. Like all of them are super nice. So for anybody that are fans of them, you know, sometimes you are fans of just very shitty people. You know what I'm saying? But those guys yeah, are no, very, honestly. very, very cool. Man. Yeah, and, I'm not gonna, definitely, that's the one thing I realized in this. Everyone isn't super cool. Like, no matter how good the music is, like, you know, the coolness, that's a whole separate thing to be the urban type shit. Hey. That's why I fuck with my wave, because I'm like, as superstar as this nigga's been, it's like, because that's the thing. It's like, it'll literally, I mean, you, you've seen the discography. It's like, I'll be on one album, an album pass. I'll be on the next album, yeah. an album or two pass. I'll be on the next album. It's, that's him. He'll specifically just DM me out the blue, be like, yo, this is my new number, send beats. You know, you know, you know what's going on. Even after Don't Need dropped, he randomly, literally out the blue, like a couple weeks after Don't Need came out, he texted me a picture of when me and him first met, like in 2018. So it was just, like that's my thing. I'm like, bro, you in a whole superstar zone. Like, yeah. I didn't heard about like people trying, like whole superstar A list producers trying to get sessions with him. He's turning it down. So I'm like, if you literally are like specifically choosing who you want beats from, and time and time again, like I said, an album or two will pass, and you still be like, yo, Benny, like fuck with. And then, like I said, I'll end up on the album. It'll be a song type shit. You know, it's like. Yeah, the coolness, yeah, it's not something everybody got, but, you know. But think about this, bro. There's some cool people in that. Raw Wave turned down uh, to being on a Drake song. You know what I'm saying? But you know what he didn't do? He didn't turn down Pop Star Benny. You feel me? <laughs> think about that. He turned down the Canadian nigga. <sighs> he did not turn down. But like like you said, I've only had one interaction with Raw Wave. I interviewed him 20 minutes after he just got scammed, like, out of, like, a bunch of money. And he was talking about it in the interview. And it was so interesting because I'm like, this nigga gonna have to do this interview. I, I would have probably said, no, nah, I'm yeah. dog. I need to de- decompress. <laughs> but uh, he he was very nice to me in the interview. Shout out to him. But like you said, not everybody's cool. You know, I, I don't ever yeah. think I told this story. I, I don't know if I feel like I told the story, but a bunch of dickheads, bro. Nigga, K Camp? Hey, man. Nigga, a dickhead. You feel me, bro? I don't know if you mm. know K Camp at all, but, uh, hey, man. K Camp? Uh, <laughs> hey, what a. No, I think, but he is from my county, though, because uh, we're from Cobb County. I think it's like, it's literally like, just. Right outside of Atlanta, like maybe 15, 20 minutes. So hey, that hey, it's a hometown type thing. For hey sure. man, I'll tell this quick story, man. I'm interviewing KK, and he's building a studio in his house. And he said, I asked him what type of microphone are you using, and he says, I mean, I use any type of microphone. I'll use an iPhone microphone, and it'll sound good. And I was like, Oh really? I was mm-hmm. like, I've recorded off an iPhone before, and it just sounds terrible. I was like, I don't know how you do that. He was like, Oh, you know why it sounds terrible? I was like, Well, I'm thinking he's gonna give me some actual insight. Oh, like what am I doing wrong? How does it sound terrible? He says, because you ain't K-Camp, nigga. I was like, oh, yeah. shit. He didn't laugh at all. He was dead serious. I was like, okay. I was like, all right. And he just kept going on. I was like, this guy here, man. What a, what a guy. So, uh, yeah, man. Not a, not yeah, every, man, There's a lot of people that that are like that. That You know how it's like, don't ever meet your heroes or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, that's a real thing. That's a real thing. That That is a real thing. That is 100% nah, a real thing. No, that's really, bro. I don't be pressed at all. No you seem like such a like, you seem like such a nice guy. You know, what I'm I don't. If anybody's mean to you, I would imagine they are also a dickhead. Like, there's no way yeah, you should be mean to pop star. Bro, anytime, anyone, because that's the thing, bro. Is anytime anyone done accept me, people gonna be like, yo, what? If you, like, you got me tripping to make Benny mad at you, type shit. You it's know what like, I'm saying, what? bro? The beats are great. <laughs> the beats are great. The vibes are great. Um, I always see. I always see your girlfriend comment under your photos. She's always like, uh, like you have, you seem like you have, you seem like you have a very good support team around you. You know what I'm saying? From the artists that rock with you to everybody. Can you hear me? Oh, wait, you're, you're, you're breaking up a little bit. Am I good? Am I good? Am I good? You hear me? You hear me now? You're back. You're back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. For sure. No, I was just saying your support team. I was saying you got, uh, you seem like you have a good team from the people that you're cool with, from like a Tony Snow to 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 Anicia, to I always see your girlfriend bigging you up in the comments. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to her, cause not you know what I'm saying not everybody has a supportive <laughs> girlfriend. That. So shout out to you for yeah. finding you a beautiful black queen and have a hoe on your side. Man. Give me a high five for that one, man. Give me a high five. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I, hey, this is the this is the biggest compliment to you, cause when I seen who she was, I seen it was your girlfriend. I was like, he got. I, I was like, boy, shout out to Pop Star Benny, boy. Huh? <laughs> shout out to Pop Star. I was like, he doing yeah. his thing, man. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's the biggest compliment when everybody's like, um, like, like when a guy gets approached by another guy, they're like, that's your girl? It's like, 
I don't, hey, I don't know how I did it, but I did it. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out right, to you, man. Nah, Cause she visited, she visited Atlanta literally like a week or two ago, yeah. and like she came to uh, uh, it was a Karen Anisia video shoot, and I think yeah, when she met Karen, you know, she was just like, oh hey, and then I was like, oh no, this is my girlfriend Dustin, and she was like, this shit, she was like, <laughs> set me up like extra crazy. <laughs> Yeah, first it's like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And it's like, oh, this is your girl, Benny. Shit. I'm like, damn, Karen, shut up. <laughs> nah, that, I'm not going to lie. Then you low-key start getting offended. you like, nigga, you think I can't pull this thing? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I'm not tripping, man. No, but I that's... get it, though, because I'm, like, on the surface. You know, I'm just, you know, my little goofy, like, oh, Pokemon video games. But it's like, <laughs> it's full circle, though. It's like, this time I be making the R&B beats. You know, I really be in my little lover boy vibe. It's like... Nah, that's beautiful. Like I said, and I, and I always see her... Um, like just bigging you up so shout out to her you know what i'm saying because so, yeah. yeah, I, no, I, I was literally on the phone with her like right when the interview started yeah. shout out because oh, okay. i would just like I, I would just interview an anicia and she was with her best friend and i'm like this best friend girl, she's literally always with you i'm like this girl's with you 24 yeah. 7 she's always bigging you up so i'm glad to see like that support system even in like atlanta female rappers I, I see Anicia doing the um, doing the freestyle, and she got the girl Wu behind her. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So like, I love to see like that camaraderie. I know like Caribou. You know what I'm saying? Like they all have that yeah. camaraderie. So I think that's that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Man. Yeah, man. I mean, but yeah, like you, like you said, I mean, it's really like some Atlanta <laughs> shit. Cause that's the thing. It's like everybody is doing their thing now, getting their flowers now. But it was literally like, you know, the past like four, five, six, seven, eight years for some of us. You know, we've done been at shows hanging out running into each other so it's really just like like kind of crazy now that everything's clicking for everybody across the board because it's like like you said it come across as like damn it's so supportive but it's really just like damn like the homegirl like literally when i met nisia she wasn't even like rapping too seriously so mm-hmm. it was just literally like oh we was just already cool like just on some yeah cool shit you know type shit but yeah man see you you really should appreciate that because in Jacksonville, bro, it's not a lot of that camaraderie. It's not a lot. Of, like, literally, Jacksonville blew up a couple years ago because niggas was dissing other dead niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, just crazy, yeah, damn near yeah, demonic yeah, type yeah, stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's what we blew up off of. And it's funny because the one thing about Atlanta that I realized, it will be some niggas beefing in Atlanta. But really, the only people that I know are, like, niggas that's in the note. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, like, a very public thing. Like, you'll find out years later, like, damn, that person was beefing. I didn't yeah. know that. You know? With Jacksonville, you know, the nigga first bars about the nigga he beefing with. So, y'all seem to try to, if y'all are having problems, y'all y'all seem to try to keep it uh, in-house. You know what I'm saying? If that makes yeah, a little sense. Yeah, yeah. So. It's a very, like, direct. Because the thing is, like, the shit's so, like, spider web, like, interconnected that it's, like, it would be, like, terribly ugly if some civil war like everyone just picking sides shit it's like anything any problems people got is like your problem is with them like you know like type shit yeah you know i just trying to just jump and have war or none because that's the thing is like we stand like the city's all catching attention to really moving forward like it's really like a strength in numbers like type of right now it don't help to be the anti guy to be out in the circle you yeah know? yeah you're, you're not wrong and it's because i feel like you're producing a lot of fun stuff like like for like anicia i was interviewing her and um i was saying how her voice is so polarizing either people are damn near turned on by her voice or they hate her voice and we we're talking about that and it's interesting because with yeah. you you're working with another nigga who is very polarizing bear one boss i see either niggas like want that nigga to never make music again or niggas need goddamn five million albums from bear one boss you know what i'm saying so it's like <laughs> it's so interesting to see the polarization of some of these artists so i want to ask you how did you first how did you like how did you and bear one boss even like connect after a little technical difficulties i don't know what you heard but essentially i was just asking how did you link up with uh bear one boss um that was bruh it, it always just be like some random shit like for real because like i found him on literally just like on instagram i think like a year or two before i linked him like 2018 i just uh started seeing this stuff and then followed him i was like you know it was interesting but yeah i feel like it was a real divisive type of thing where i was just like some of these songs is like the craziest most futuristic best shit i ever heard i was like some of these songs I'm like yeah whatever but that was like the thing is like I think I sent him beats here and there too, but it was just like all right, it's Arson City is doing this thing. But I think I had got booked to DJ a show like the end of twenty nineteen, like December twenty nineteen or January twenty twenty, and like I don't think uh, I think like my set time was close to his. Like I don't think he had a DJ or something. So uh, 
they were just like, yeah, you're going to be doing your own DJ set, and then you're going to be doing Bear One Boss later. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. He had sent me, like, a one-track mix, so it was, like, an easy DJ yeah. set, you know. But then, like, the show happened. It was, like, end of the night. There might have been, like, 15 people max mm. type shit. 15 people and then the people behind the bar. And it's, like, I started his set, and it had, like, all the pauses and sound alarms and drops and shit. I started the set. It was, like, a 30-minute set, and that nigga performed it. Like, it was fucking Coachella. Like, <laughs> literally, like... 15 people in there, like, the most, like, passionate, like, singing, dancing, like, nonstop, like, for 30 minutes straight. I was like, that's fucking crazy. That's the thing I had heard is music here and there. So I was like, okay, it sounded cool. But, like, in the performance, I was like, he is, like, the music. Like, exactly what you hear, exactly what you see in the music videos is, like, that's, like, him. So, like, that shit just blew me away, made me a bigger fan. And then just later that year, like, October, uh, homie ZD had a session um, me and my homie ZD, we had been making hella together there, like that week or two. And then he was just like, yo, send me all those beats we've been making. I got a session with this guy later today. He was literally like, session with this guy later. Just send all those beats we did. And then the next day he picked me up. He had did Zan with him and then a song on my beat. And I was like, oh, the guy was very one boss. What the fuck? I've been listening to him. Like, I've been really been trying to get shit with him. And then he was like, yeah, he's, uh, he's not doing anything at all uh, today. You know, he said that he was trying to link. So we had picked him up. We had picked him up, and then we had went to go grab some weed, and we went to my homie spot, and Tony was over there. So my first day Lincoln there, we had introduced him to Tony on some random shit, and then I think uh, I think Bear had already heard of Tony, so you know he was like shout out to him and all that shit. But then yeah, I think we had did like four more songs, and then literally like the span of that week. I think we, we might have like 12 songs and by the end of the month we had like 30 mm. we just dropped the project and then we were like all right if we naturally just linked up did all this and that's the thing too like you know i started pushing them a little bit more um up and down so after that first month we was just if it's moving like this the chemistry wise because like all the little industry people that was paying attention to me was starting to catch on to them and shit too so it was like we might as well just keep going so honestly from like winking and working hella that first month we were like, we might as well keep it going. It was locked in. Really going on three years now. Three years in this October. This October, November. So my homie, uh, Rari, he's like, bro, this nigga should be an A&R. Like, he finds everybody before they blow up. The nigga real, <clears throat> bro, this nigga, I always said this story. This nigga sent me real Boston Richie before he was rapping. He would just tap me on real Boston Richie because that nigga sold weed. And that was, that was it. So when the nigga started rapping, he was like, bro, I'm telling you, bro. So like, He's just, like, super-duper tapped in. So he sent me Bear One Boss, and he was like, nigga, you need to interview him. Like, he just kept sending me him. Once again, me being pessimistic, I'm like, I'm not trying to listen to this nigga. So then I ended up like, okay, you keep annoying me about it. I'm a listener, bro. So I listened to him. He was polarizing for me because I didn't really get it at first. But you know what What song been stuck in my head, bro? And, I, and I'm and i like, bro, I thought I didn't like this nigga, but I might like this nigga because this song is in my head, man. What I'm going to say, pull old school like a senior. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The beat, you feel me, man? <laughs> yeah. That's a crazy song, man. That's a crazy song, man. It truly is. Crazy song. And it's funny because... What a teacher. What, what, what a teacher. You know what I'm saying? I used to be a teacher. What do you say? <laughs> I used to get treated from a teacher. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So, and I'm reading the comments, and I see the... That's where I say polarizing, because I see it's like people like... Either like they don't like it, really, or it's people that's on something like... Y'all don't understand it yet. You know what I'm saying? It's like kind of like comparing this like Young Thug. Like when Young, remember first Young Thug came out, niggas yeah, was like, bro, literally. this states. I remember, bro, I remember when Stoner came out, bro. When Stoner came out, I was literally, bro, I'll never forget this. I was literally in the car with my homegirl and her boyfriend, and there was playing, and the friend said, "What the fuck? This is the worst shit I done ever heard. This is music." And the girl was like, "Oh man, this thing is the future." And they was real deal no. like. Like, like, been a battle it out. I was just like, that's crazy. Because that was like in the real time, like, <laughs> literally the separation. That's crazy. Being in a car with two people. It's like you said, you're literally like in real life Instagram comment section damn near. You know what I'm saying? So, literally. That's absolutely like, crazy. So, shout out to Bear One Boss. Um, I really do got to give Bruh some more listens because that that senior song, he might have cracked the code with that one. That song, yeah. he might have cracked the code. So, if you can send yeah, me some stuff lie, that I need really? to listen to. 
I would really. I got you. Cause I was gonna say the singles this year is, and that's the thing too. It's like it is evolving because you know it's like the earlier stuff, the earlier stuff. But like I feel like now he's like mixing like the more like fun melodic part. Yeah. But like my boy really like because we got shit where he like rapping on some like Andre three thousand type beats I done made for him really? type shit like on some like hip hop pop shit. It's like he really on some Lil Wayne shit where he just like likes rapping. So it's like I feel like he really is like the same way with the senior shit like he really like sneaking in bars like you know it just sound cool but it was like he really saying some shit in there yeah you know um, just witty like i said little wayne type shit so that's that's where he's going with it this year for sure that's why i think i, I picked up on it uh what do you say pull up old school like a senior you know so i i it's just so catchy and like you said he'll be sneaking in some stuff so i i definitely appreciate that and alana is like going crazy right now because like what's the one nigga who be yelling uh, oh, two times dirt ball uh, or something like that. Yeah, that nigga, that uh, crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all got some people coming up right now, man. So, and once again, even though you probably haven't produced for that nigga, but you are providing the soundtrack to honestly people's lives because like niggas get these beats stuck in their head. You know what I'm saying? Like you know how people have like favorite scores of a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you're doing. Yeah. Like, you're really scoring people's lives because they going throughout their day listening to these music. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're the score for this nigga life. So, mm-hmm. I just I, I just want you to realize how important that is. You feel me, bro? No. Nah, I appreciate that, man. Sincerely. It's it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, um, yeah, man, I, I, I don't want to keep it for too long. I, I, I appreciate you for... You know what I'm saying? Uh, getting off the phone with your girl to talk to a nigga in a bonnet. Do you feel me bad? I really do appreciate that. Um, but anything else you got to say for the people? Like, any last words, man? Let it be known. Um, last words is uh, never give up. Meditate. Drink water. Go for walks. Call your mom. Call your dad. Tell your family you love them. Um don't litter littering is fucking lame littering is so lame bro that's so lame it's like it's nothing to like hold it's like you already got the trash like bro just hold it till you get to somewhere um, um yeah and i also said that in the interview recently and i had to double down that was mine because like it's just like it's like bro just don't do it it's like it's nothing it's like you got a little wrapper you got a little receipt just keep it in your pocket because here's the thing it's like i feel like littering because it's like the world is defense like the world can't pick up the trash when yeah. you throw it down bro like come on no he uh yeah yeah Niantic, he said that, that that was my interview that i had to do with him and i, I was very i didn't i didn't expect him to say that i didn't know what he was gonna say but i wasn't expecting no i was like okay i guess we're <laughs> anti litter today i got a question i got a question for you then yeah because niggas would be anti litter but niggas also pee in public like do you pee out of not not Wait, pee, one like, more time? i said niggas would be anti litter but is that like, can we be anti litter and niggas still pee out in public? You know, how niggas like pee out like pee outside a club or something like that. Mm. Nigga, pee, you know what I'm saying? That's that's pretty disgusting. <laughs> that's pretty disgusting. Because mm. I literally just did that disgusting, not disgusting, but natural. <laughs> it's like because if you didn't do it, some animal is entitled to doing it too. So it's like. You know, in our civilization, that's not the most uh, civilized, advanced type of thing we could do. But it's not wrong. Now, littering, it's like God didn't make plastic. You know, it's like we we manufacture these bottles. It's like, so that's what I'm saying. That don't got to go back to the earth. But, you know. I will end it with this. Since you talked about natural stuff and everything, do you see what's going on in Mexico? Yeah. That's crazy. I feel like they're trolling us. I feel like trolling so I'm pretty skeptical guy. I'm not going to lie. I think those are real alien bodies. For people that don't know what you're talking about, the Mexican government just went live and basically literally, lit, quite literally pulled out dead alien bodies from a thousand years ago and said, hey, that's what we got. Yeah. And But on the flip side, crazy. I'm not going to lie because on the flip side, I'm not even going to lie to you. On the flip side, I'm not going to lie to you. It might be some shit because... I feel like ancient aliens would make, make more sense than like just popping out of nowhere type alien. Cause I'll say that because I was just thinking, like, think about it. Like, real deal. iPhone. Boom. iPhone matters to us. We know the full significance, the full context, like in thirty thousand years, if they found the remains of an iPhone, 
they would just see an iPhone. Like, they wouldn't know, like, the full, like, technology. So I'm like, who knows what fully functioning, like, ancient technology that, like, they really could have just had that we, like, just aren't aware of. Like, all the hieroglyphs and all that shit. Like, I feel like, because that's the thing. I do know in South America, they do got them pyramids and type shit. So honestly, the aliens, that might, it might all feed into each other the more I'm verbalizing. There you go, man. So shout out to the aliens. I feel like I feel like aliens would like senior by beer one boss. I feel like that's just a different type of song that aliens would be. You feel me, nigga? Pull that with the beaker. You feel me, man? Yeah, it's the frequencies, man. It's, it's the frequencies. The frequencies. It's, it's the frequencies. It make, it, make, it make you smile, man. That's so for everybody watching, I appreciate it. Hope you guys are smiling. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Until next time, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Haters are gonna hate. And players are gonna play. You guys holler at your boy. <laughs>